Welcome to my first video on a series I'm going to do on probability at an introductory level and we'll get a little more complicated as we go. So I really encourage you to take notes, really think, really make sure you understand what's going on because statistics is not one of those uh, passive activities where you can kick back, relax and, and just have it soak into your head. You have to really critically think and picture what's going on at each step uh, with me here. And so there's a, there's a lot of background material. I'm going to try to get a running start and, and do this as quick as we can. So the first thing we need to do is talk about two definitions in order to get going. First one is mutually exclusive. Two things are mutually exclusive if they don't occur together. Mutually exclusive means either this thing happens or that thing happens. Let's talk about these two things that can happen as being A or B. So mutually exclusive, if A and B are mutually exclusive, what that tells us is that A and B don't occur together. They don't happen at the same time. So B, A and B don't occur at the same time. And Another definition that um, we need to refer to sometimes is the idea of collectively exhaustive. A and B are collectively exhaustive if everyone is either A or B, or they could be both, right? So a list of categories, for example, are collectively exhaustive if everyone can be put in one of those categories. Or more, than, or more than one of those categories, perhaps. So collectively exhaustive means we haven't left out anything. There's, there are no cases that are um, not accounted for. So briefly, A and B, or you know, it could be A, B, and C, um, they are collectively exhaustive um, if all cases can be put in either A or B, or possibly both. Um, and I'll give you an example here. Um, everything is A or B, or both. So, for example, collectively exhaustive. Think about um, how most forms are, um, they ask you to check your race. So, an example of collectively exhaustive might be if we had a list of races where we had, um, you know, Caucasian, and then um, African American or Black, depending on the form. Um, we could also have Asian. Um, we could have not really a race, but a, an ethnicity in in the United States is Hispanic. We could have um, Pacific Islander, and we could have uh, an American Indian. And we could keep listing lots and lots of races. We would not have a list that is collectively exhaustive until we have enough races there to where everyone can put themselves in at least one of those categories. So we could also have other here. And we could say, okay, check one or more of these boxes. Uh, someone might be half Asian and half black or they might be half Caucasian and uh, half American Indian for example. Collectively exhaustive says you can be in more than one category at a time uh, but collectively exhaustive means that everyone has to be put somewhere. You can't have any cases that are unaccounted for and a convenient way to make sure that a set of categories is collectively exhaustive is to put down this other because you don't want anybody to say, well, I'm not any of those, therefore I'm not going to check a box. So um, that is an idea of collectively exhaustive. Mutually exclusive is the idea, going back to mutually exclusive, mutually exclusive is the idea that you might tell people you are only allowed to check one box for race. Some surveys do this some allow you to check more than one. Mutually exclusive would say, look, 
you have to choose either you're Caucasian, African American, Asian, Hispanic, Pacific Islander, or American Indian, or other. You can only pick one because we want these categories to be mutually exclusive. That would mean, again, A and B don't occur at the same time. This list of categories would be mutually exclusive if you are only allowed to be in one of those categories. That means that if we know that you're Asian, you can't also be Caucasian or an American Indian. Now in reality, we know that people can be of more than one race, but many times when you're filling out paperwork, they say you have to pick one. So if you're more than one race, maybe pick the other category. Right? So those are two definitions, mutually exclusive things cannot occur at the same time. So um, once you know that someone is A, they cannot be B. Or if you knew that someone was B, they could not be A. Collectively exhaustive means um, nothing's left out. So if you take all the people that are in each of these categories, you have the entire collection of people. Now, two ground rules that we need to talk about. Let me delete this uh, list here. Uh, two ground rules about probabilities. When we talk about probabilities, uh, probability is always going to be uh, a number between 0 and 1. And so if something has a probability of 0, that means that it cannot happen or does not happen. A probability of 1 means that it is certain to happen. It has to happen. It has to be absolutely true. And um, so that's ground rule number one. Ground rule number two is that if we have a list of possibilities, say A, B, C, it could involve D, E, and F, but if A, B, C, etc. is a list of categories that are both mutually exclusive and collectively exhaustive, then if we add up all the probabilities of what's the chance that you're A, the chance that you're B, the chance that you're C, and the chance that you're D, etc., if we add up the pro all those probabilities, then they have to sum to 1. Then the probabilities of all of them have to sum to exactly 1. So that's one reason why these two um, definitions are important. If I have a list of categories where everybody has to be in a category, that's collectively exhaustive, but they're only allowed to be in one category, mutually exclusive, then I know that everybody is in one and only one category. If I calculate the probability that someone is in category A plus the probability that they're a B plus the probability that they're a C, and add up all those probabilities, you have to have every one or everything or 100%. All of the chances have to be accounted for. Now, one more set of preliminaries. Some symbols that we're going to see quite a bit as we go through are a C that is a superscript C, uh, an upside down U, a U, and a vertical bar. Let's go through these one at a time. This C here, for example, um, we might have the category A for Asian. What's the probability that the next person that walks in my office is an Asian? Might be what we mean by A. If I put a C on it, A with a superscript C, C stands for complement. So let's type that out. C O M P L E. M E N T complement. Um, complement just means not. So if you are reading this, A, A is Asian. A with a C on it is not Asian. And so, for example, if in a particular community, the probability that the next person that walks through the door, it is Asian, is um, 20%, we would write that as 0 0.20, then what's the probability that the person walking through the door is not Asian?
Well, it has to be the other 80%, right? So that's complement, just means not something. Now, this upside down U stands for intersection or and. Um, I remember that it's and because it kind of looks like the letter A. If you were to put a little cross symbol through the middle of that, you could make the letter A out of it. So intersection just means and. For example, uh, you could ask the question, uh, what is the probability that today is going to be both cold and let me copy my little symbol over here. Rainy. Right? So we will figure out ways to calculate these probabilities. So what's the probability that today is cold? And what is the probability that it is also rainy? So this intersection, this and here, is asking what's the probability that it is both of those things on the same day, cold and rainy. Now the next symbol, it's very common, is the U. And U the, uh, stands for union, or you can remember that it stands for the word or. For example, um, we can take exactly the same example that we have up here instead of um, cold and rainy, we might ask what's the probability that it is cold or rainy today. Now what's the difference between these two? Let's think carefully about this. In order for us to say that it is both cold and rainy, we have to look outside, it's raining, and we look at our temperature gauge and it's very cold. So the probability that it's cold and rainy might be small because both of those things have to be happening at the same time. However, this one, the probability that it is either cold or rainy, you have a better chance of it being one or the other. Now this, you know, one, one thing to keep in mind with the or is it, is it includes both. So the technical interpretation of the union or this or is I'm asking what is the chance that it is cold or rainy. So if it's cold, yes, that's what we're talking about. If it's rainy, yes, that's what we're talking about. Or if it is both, that is also what we're talking about with the union. So if it's either cold or rainy or it's both, then this cloud union rainy is true. But cloud and rainy, they both have to be happy, uh, happening at the same time. If it's just one or the other, this is not true. So it has to be both cold and rainy at the same time. So one more symbol that we're going to be seeing a lot and then I'll end this preliminary video and we'll actually get into some rules. So this up and down little vertical bar here that's kind of hard to see, uh, the way you read that is with the word given or you can also read it sometimes as the word of. Let me give you a couple of examples. Um, we could ask the question, what is the probability that someone is going to be rich given they have a college degree? So given the fact that somebody has a college degree, what is the probability that they're rich? So let me type out that explanation there. Um, so we'd want to calculate what is the chance or the probability that someone is rich given that they have a college degree.